Okay, here's the uh, test stand from the back. Uh, I'm standing back fairways because of this uh, camera I've got. It doesn't uh, do uh, macro work very well, I guess. Um, I'll move in and I'll give you a little bit better look at each upright. Or each upright is pretty much the same, but I'll give you the critical dimensions that go with it. Okay, we'll look at the, at the uh, passenger side uh, upright here. And this one here, from the top of the base to the top of this tube here, is 22 inches high. Now that dimension is not critical. As you can see, there's nothing special on top, just the support for the, uh, the control panel there. Uh, the critical distance for, once again, for the motor mount that I used at the front, from the top of the uh, base tubing to this first bolt is, and I measured this off the unit, and I, you'll have to check, once again, check your measurements depending upon what motor mount you use, is 15 and 3 8 inches. This one, the second one up, is 19 and an eighth inch. Now, once again, check your dimensions. That's what I measured off of my unit. I long ago lost the... Uh, the uh, napkin plans that I used to make this unit here. Uh, so, you know, once again, it's also going to depend upon what kind of engine you're using and so on. This is for a small block ship. Now, the distance between uprights, outside to outside, is. 17 and a half inches. Now I'm reading all these off of some paperwork that I've uh, written down at my knee here, so that's why I'm pausing a bit here. A 17 and a half inches for this dimension works out well uh, because it puts these um, bolts here in the center of the tube with a spacing of 15 and a half inches. Once again, that's for a small block shift. Okay, and as far as I'm going to say, I think that's the end of the critical dimensions that I would say. From this point on, I'm probably not going to give you any more dimensions because I think that you can figure them out for yourself. Uh, you know, depending upon what tubing you've got and so on. Now I'll go into some of the uh, miscellaneous structure. You've seen most of it. Uh, that's the ground cable that I've got coming off the back of the unit that goes directly into the motor mount bolt. Now you might have noticed that I couldn't get the right length of bolt for the length of uh, standoffs I had there. The length of those standoffs is not particularly critical. I'll just quickly measure it right now and I can give it to you if you're curious. Uh, it looks to be approximately two and a quarter. And the only reason I used that much distance was because I've actually got a manual transmission flywheel on here which has a lot more depth to it than let's say a uh, a automatic transmission flex plate. Now you will notice that I did reinforce the sleeves that come out of the tubes, tubes and those sleeves pass right through the tubing are fully welded on this side as well as fully welded on this side then I put reinforcement plates on both sides uh, supporting the full dimension as well as a 1 8 inch plate going through here and as well uh, triangular supports here as well. That might have been overkill a bit. If you look on a typical engine stand they don't have that. Um, if I were to make this again I was watching uh, Gears uh, with Stacy David the other day and I saw an interesting engine uh, test stand that he was uh, using on his show or he was hyping on his show and it used and I'll go over to my in, my uh, engine stand and I'll show you exactly what it is it had adjustable mounts for the back of uh, of it and those adjustable amounts looked like this and as, as a matter of fact that engine test stand could function as an engine stand period because it could also be rotated as well now, if I were to do that for and uh, build another engine test stand or modify this one accordingly, I would not worry about that because I've got you know two engine stands and I've got no shortage of them. But I did like the adjustability that he had. You know that would remove any of those critical dimensions. You could put them wherever you wanted, and uh, 
and you wouldn't have to worry about it then you know the only critical dimension becomes the uh, longitudinal distances you know between your uprights now you notice that I used uh, some of the extra expanded metal that I had lying around to build a cage around the flywheel and that wasn't uh, meant to contain anything if the flywheel comes apart uh, you're in trouble that's not going to keep any of that in there what that was meant for was the assumption was that you'd be working on the engine or I would be working on the engine presumably adjusting something valve lash or something like that I didn't want to take any chance that I would drop a wrench in here and have it be fired off at 100 miles an hour or for that matter get jammed into something and break something not to mention the fact sticking your hand in there it's gonna be like a buzz saw now if you're a little bit less safety inclined well you could go without the expanded metal but I wouldn't recommend it